seated? I thought we did pretty well. Right? Yeah, that's a tough song. There's that little uh, lilting section in there. That's hard. Bow our heads and pray. Lord, as we come to you today, we need your spirit to help us understand, to enlighten us, Lord God. To help us know your truth, to understand your ways, and then to follow you. In Jesus' name we pray. My brothers, my sisters. It was a really difficult time. I was a young pastor and uh, things got messy. And I don't just mean a little bit messy. It was, it, was, it was downright awful. The church, the ministry overflowed into my life, my personal life, my family life. It was rough. In the deep south, I don't I don't know how far deep, but I know in the woods of Louisiana there are these thickets where there's these vines. The vines are about as big around as your finger, and they got these thorns on them that are you know, like three quarters of an inch long, and they're just nasty. And for whatever reason, there's always something scratching around on the ground in the middle of those things, and I always wanted to know what it was. And so I'd be lured in to this thicket of vines with thorns. And I'd get back in there, and you can't see five feet in front of you because it's this tangled, thorny mess that you could not get out of. And you turn around and look where you came from, and you're not even sure how you got to where you were. Yeah. That's how my yeah. life and my ministry felt. The thorny, tangled thicket. But I didn't know where to go. I didn't even know exactly how I had gotten there. I had no idea how I was going to get out of this mess. You ever been in fog so thick that you couldn't see five feet in front of you? Where you think you know where you're going, but you're not really sure, and you, every step that you take, it's sort of blind? That's how it felt. It was horrible. I, I didn't, not only, it wasn't just that I didn't know which path to take. It was that I didn't see a path at all. And no matter which direction I looked, all I saw was bad news, bad things, horrible things. I didn't even see how I could take one step forward. And, you know, you start to get kind of grumpy and miserable. The darkness begins to, to fill your brain, and to fill your heart. You begin to lose hope that this is going to work out. You begin to lose hope that things can get better. You start to be filled with fears about what's going to happen. I don't know if you've ever been in a spot like that where you are just totally no clue how in the world you're ever going to get out of it. But you've probably been in a position where you are in serious doubt about which way you should go. Amen? after the divorce or big mess at work or after a doctor's visit or blow up with your friends and you just don't know what path to take and how to go. The mess that I was in lasted for months maybe even years. And somewhere in the course of that mess that I was in, I came across the verses that we read just a moment ago from 1 John, and, and it was those verses that began to help me deal with the situation that I was in. You want to flip back to page 8 there, that first paragraph. This is what John says. I'm going to skip down to, to, this, to verse 6. We claim to have fellowship with him, that's with God, oh, yeah. yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not live out the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. 
began to, to think about, meditate on, be consumed with the idea that God is light. And what exactly did that mean? That if I am his disciple and his child, then I'm going to follow the light. I remember having some rough conversations with God, asking him where he was. And I found guidance and comfort meditating on the idea that Jesus, that God is light. We've been talking about the I am and the I will statements of Jesus. The I am, Jesus is the I am. God is the I am. Yahweh, Jehovah, his name in Hebrew, yeah, yeah, comes from the verb to be. We get this word that means I am and I do not change. I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. And there's nothing that you can do to change me. And there is nothing that will ever happen that will change me. I am who I am. I'm self-sufficient. I am the same always. I just exist. And that's a good thing to know doesn't change his mind or change his ways or change his promises. So his I am-ness leads very much into his I will-ness, his promises. And last week we talked about the fact that Jesus is, that Jesus says, I am the bread who came down from heaven. Bread, give us this day our daily bread, give us everything that we need. Jesus is telling us that in everything in life, the only thing that we need is, is him. We have him, then we have everything that we Today, I want you to listen to Jesus as he talks about being the light of the world. He's in Jerusalem. He's outside the temple. He's teaching. The Pharisees are challenging him. This is early in his ministry. And, and they're saying, who gives you the right to teach? You don't have any of the right credentials to be teaching. And Jesus is explaining to him that he's the Messiah. Messiah had always been associated with light, right? Uh, he had even been called the enlightener, the one who opens eyes and opens minds to understand. So he uses that as a picture of who he is to declare to, him that, to them that he is the Lord God, that he is the light. And light was on everyone's mind because it was a Passover. Remember what the Passover celebrated? God delivering the Israelites from slavery in Egypt, right? And when he delivered them from slavery in Egypt, he led them through the wilderness by a pillar of light, a pillar of fire, right? And so in the festival, there would be all these things to remind them of that Jesus was the light of the pillar of fire who led them through the wilderness. And so Jesus, listen to what Jesus says here. It's printed for you in the program. He alludes to that pillar of fire in the wilderness. When Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me, there's the allusion to the pillar of fire, you follow the light, and you'll never walk in darkness. The Israelites knew that if, as long as they followed that pillar of fire that was there, they would never be led wrong. That pillar of fire was the visible reminder that the I Am, the great Lord God Almighty, was with them wherever they went. And as long as that pillar of fire, that pillar of smoke was there, they knew that they didn't have to worry about anything because they knew that God would protect them. It was a symbol not only of God's protection and presence, but it was a symbol uh, of God's blessing. Light is always a blessing. It was a symbol of guidance that God was going to lead them in the right way and take care of them. And even though they were in the wilderness, they would always have food. They would always have water because that pillar of fire was there to lead them, to protect them, to guide them, to bless them, to remind them that God was with them. And God was giving them hope, leading them through the wilderness and ultimately leading them to the promised land, right? A better place, a better tomorrow. The Exodus is a perfect picture of our life here on earth. In slavery, not to the Egyptians, but to sin. Rescued by a Savior, not Moses, but Jesus, who led us up out of slavery and through the wilderness that is this life and this world, filled with all kinds of troubles and hardships and difficulties and questions and unknowns. 
we have God's light to guide us and we follow his light until he leads us to a better day, to the ultimate promised land that we call heaven. Right now we're in the wilderness. And God, Jesus says to us, I am the light. If you follow me, you will never walk in darkness. Darkness. That's the idea of woe and misery. Darkness has the idea of loss and confusion. Darkness has the idea of resentment and bitterness and anger. Darkness has the idea of fears, and doubts, and hopelessness. Follow the light and you'll never walk in. When things were so bad, and I didn't know what step to take, I began to think about who Jesus was and what the light symbolized. That Jesus is the light of the world. He told me that the path that I should follow was never one that was going to be filled or characterized by fear. The direction I was going was governed by fear of this or fear of what might happen there or fear that this might take place. But that was the wrong path because that's not the path of light. If the path or the step that I was thinking of taking had to do with, with, uh, with anger or, or resentment or, or frustration, then that was not the path of light and that was not the step that I should take. Step that I was thinking of doing had to do with with a lack of forgiveness or selfishness. I knew that that wasn't the path that I should take, and it wasn't the way that I should go. See, I didn't know how to get through the mess that I was in. They didn't tell me how to deal with that sort of an issue that was coming to me. All I could do was look at Jesus. <clears throat> what the light of the world symbolized and walk towards that. Sometimes I felt like I was crawling on my hands and knees but I was always moving towards the light. Sometimes I'd push through a section and I'd come out scarred and scratched by all the thorns. I'd come out scarred on the other side but I was moving towards the, the light. Sometimes I'm sure I made my mistakes, and I'm sure the Lord God could come down and point out all the mistakes that I made. I don't know what mistakes I made. I'm sure I made them, but I was always trying to move towards the light. And it isn't, you know, sometimes that passage from, from the Psalms talks about how God's word is a light for my path. And you think about it this way. Where the light is shining on the path in front of I think it's more like it was when I had uh, Brad up here. God shines out at us. He shines out of the darkness into our hearts and into our lives. Right? Through all the darkness and the thistles and the mess that there is, we see Jesus shining. We follow that. We walk towards the light, like a moth going towards the, the porch light to its death. Except we're not going towards our death going towards life but it's the same thing and attracted we are attracted to it drawn to it to the light that's the way that I should go and sometimes when we're in the middle of the darkness in the middle of the fog in the middle of the thicket we don't always understand what step we should take what path we should go we don't even know where we're going and so all we do is we look at the light and light and we go towards that when I was a boy we were going on vacation to Lake Malawi. Uh, it's a big lake in the Great Rift Valley. And as we were coming down into the valley, we got to this roadblock and the police said the bridge ahead was out. And in Central Africa, what that means is that it is out indefinitely and there is no plan for it ever to be fixed. <laughs> Maybe the next election might get someone to do something about the bridge, but there was no good way to get from here to there anymore. And so we just thought our vacation was over. But there was this guy and he had this big old Land Rover military looking vehicle and he says, follow me. And we had our little Nissan Irvan, which was not made, 
We're off-roading, but that's where we were going. <laughs> so off-road we go, and he's driving through I'm out in the middle of nowhere Central Africa bushland, right? And it's dark, and he's gone because he did not wait. He just went. And so he disappeared, you know, it was an hour ago, and we're driving, trying to find our way, hoping that we're going the right direction, making the right turns, and it gets dark. And if you've ever been in a place where there is no electricity for miles, you know what the darkness is. There's no street lights, there's no porch lights. There's no glow of Denver on the horizon. It's just dark. We're driving in this wilderness. And I, you know, I'm a kid. I don't know what's going on. But I know there's an issue here. You can sense it from your parents. The panic is setting in. And my mother is... You can just see every muscle in her body. Tensing. The voices get quieter and you're lost. You just feel good. All of a sudden, there's a pin. That's all it was pin of light, right? Miles and miles away through the forest, through the bush of, of the of Central African wilderness. It was just this pin of light miles away. And immediately, what did we all do? There's a light! <laughs> and we spent the next hour and a half working our way towards that light, turning, trying to get to that light. We didn't know if that light was a place to go, but that light was hope that we would find a person because we hadn't seen anybody for two hours. No sign of human habitation except for the rutted road that we were driving down for two hours. That light symbolized possibly the right direction. Possibly we might get out of this. There was hope in that light. And we drove toward that light and we get to the light and here it is a wire with one incandescent light bulb hanging in the middle of the Central African wilderness. We asked the person whose house it was, they had to keep going down that road. We got to where we were going. If an incandescent light bulb hanging from a wire miles away can bring hope and guidance and direction and peace, imagine what the light of the world tells us that if we follow him, we're never going to walk in the darkness of this world. The darkness of confusion, the darkness of bitterness, the darkness of woe and misery. We walk in the light and follow in the light. Our lives will be filled with the light of life. That is the life that God intends for each one of us to have. The light that he intended for mankind to live. The light of life that is the eternal life that he won for us in heaven. Follow the light. Sometimes you'll be on your hands and knees. Sometimes you won't know which step to take. You'll probably take a wrong turn here or there. You look at the light. You look at Jesus. And understand who he is and what he is like. You follow that path. You will never go wrong. May the Lord God, the light of the world, shine in your hearts and minds. To enlighten you to understand where he would have you go and how he would have you live. May his light shine in your darkest hours so that you see that light and follow that light and are never led astray. May the light of life fill you each day with the joy, the hope, the peace, the confidence, the love that comes from knowing Christ Jesus. For his sake. Let's stay. Uh, we continue in song by singing the